everyone, welcome to another exciting episode of Can It Take a K26? The show where we take a variety of blasters and see if they can be upgraded using a K26 spring. I am your host, Captain Xavier, and today we're going to be looking at technically one blaster, but it comes with two blasters, so we're just going to do them both. We are, of course, talking about the Scavenger, and then its little mini jolt. But we're going to start with the Scavenger, because that's the one that it's named after. Scavenger was released in 2018 as part of the Zombie Strike line, and is basically a modular sling fire, as far as you can t anyone's been able to work out. It's got a stock attachment point, barrel attachment points, rail comes with a whole bunch of different attachments and then they came out with additional attachments that go well with it but would obviously work on anything that takes any of those but i'm curious if it can take a k26 since we we already did the sling fire and it couldn't but you never know they changed the internals on these more than you might expect sometimes i'd be surprised if they did on this one it does have one interesting feature that i was completely and utterly unaware of there's a selector switch on the side that turns it into slam fire so it fires when you complete the prime which is just Neat that they even thought of that and that they were able to work it out that simply so I like that Let's get this thing open and see what we can do with it if we can't we are going to try to put something else in it This actually is being lent to me by a friend of mine who has also brought a sling fire that we're gonna try to just double up the spring If it won't take k26 just for fun. So let's get this thing open Okay, so the handle is in fact a complete separate part which is Neat that they did it. It makes it easier for painting, of course. Um, internals do look a little bit heavier than the sling fire. We've got a sling fire. I need the whole thing for now. Not too late. Um, uh, anyway, I broke it. Uh, stouter. The teeth are are uh, finer, which is probably going to help it have fewer of certain issues. Oh, no, I'm just looking at the wrong teeth. The teeth are the same. Never mind. But this is uh, definitely one of the stouter bolt sleds I've ever seen. That's interesting. And the teeth that are normally here are now up here, which I don't know what on earth they're supposed to do. Oh, the interface, okay. So the ratcheting system is on the far side of the shell rather than built into the housing here. Um, gears look to be bigger. It looks like there's actually another whole set of them. That's interesting. Probably for the slam fire. Yeah, it probably helps. Probably, it's definitely, having more teeth makes the, the gear ratio better. So it probably helps with that. Slam fire is all the way on the other side, so I really can't see how it works. But I, I assume it just engages, so it makes it as though the trigger's been pulled every time, and then the thing just has slam fire, so it's uh, has a slam fire catch system, unlike this one. So that's neat. Let's, it was pulling the plunger tube out so I could get a look at it since we're not overly in concerned about the internals of this anymore. Looks to be about, yeah, pretty much exactly the same size, which is possibly a good thing for us. Okay, let's see if we can get to the spring housing. So that's neat. The whole spring retention system is Fairly solid, and uh, <laughs> yeah, K26 is definitely not going to fit for the same reason it doesn't fit in the vast majority of the magazine fed blasters. The, the spring is simply too big and it interferes with the catch. However, the sling fire spring is a little bit shorter, but it is the same diameter. So we are going to um, clip it slightly. We're going to clip the rounded ends off because they will interfere with the flattened ends off, rather. And now we should be able to thread it into this one. Without it bunching up. So there we go. We've doubled the spring. We're just going to put it right back in there. We're not going to end up any spring rattle. There was, in fact, just for compression. So now the question is simply compression. Can we get enough compression with that doubled spring for it to still catch? 
make sure you get the catch spring in there properly. Hopefully it will still be able to catch. If not, we'll open it back up and see if um, increasing the catch spring will make it work. So we're going to put this thing back together after a word from our sponsor. Interesting. I've never heard anything more beautiful in my life. All right, well, that is a no for K26, but a yes to the doubling of the spring. So it it catches just fine. Does it slam fire just fine? It does. So there you go. If you get yourself a scavenger and you happen to have a sling fire that you either don't want because you've upgraded to a scavenger or you've taken the stock off to integrate it on something, you can, in fact, double the spring up in your scavenger quite nicely. Nice, easy little mod. You take the shell off, take two screws out, take the back of the spring housing out, pull the spring, double it up, put it back in, screw it back together. Try not to mess up any of the internals. They seem to be better secured than in the sling fire. I didn't have any trouble getting it back together, whereas I usually have problems getting a sling fire back together. So I've got to get myself one of these because they're in my color and they're modular and I like it. I just have to paint this a different color because it just doesn't fit my idiom. Uh, but other than that, yeah. All right, on to the next contestant. Wait. All right, we're gonna bring out the uh, double-barreled jolt to try after these messages. All of the K26 used on this series was donated by Out of Darts. Check out his new website at outofdarts.com for all your nerf modding needs. Our next contestant is the Stock Blast. I don't even know if it has a name. It probably doesn't. But it is the double-barreled jolt that comes with the stock for the Scavenger, which is super cool. I mean, a, a double-barreled Smart AR jolt that attaches to a stock is just a really neat idea. These are the kinds of attachments that I, I approve of. I like that Nerf is actually coming out with functional attachments as opposed to more barrels that do nothing but create drag, or more scopes that do nothing, or another shaped foregrip. They're coming out with things that either fire or hold stuff or things like that, and I like it. So, we're going to get this open and see if it can take a K26. Almost certainly not, but you never know. It does look different than just a jolt reshell. I mean, obviously, it is a jolt reshell, but only two screws. Let's get this thing open. <laughs> Alright, so this thing is not as easy to take apart as a jolt. A jolt is just four screws on the bottom. This has two screws, and then you have to take out the trigger pin, which can be tricky if you don't have the right tools. Luckily, I do. Okay, so it is internally the same as a jolt. It's just got a slightly different shell. Really neat looking shell. So, K26 is definitely not going to fit up into the floating plunger head. Because it's way too large. But there are various springs that will work. Unfortunately, even more annoyingly, it doesn't have a screw-off plunger head anymore. Which means getting the spring off of there is going to be a nightmare, and I'm not going to do it. So that is an unfortunate new end... Like I said, since it's got, you have to take that pin out of there. If you didn't have the right tools, it would be difficult to modify this. Diapers. All right, got some zing to it. First barrel fires better than the top barrel, but that's true of every smart AR system ever. Um, and if your darts aren't basically brand new, they're going to get pushed out. You can fix that either by the old way we did. We just put a strip of electric tape just on the inside of the barrel, and that created enough friction to keep it from pushing out. Um, a fancier way is you just do a really short ring of brass, and you just put it at the very tip of the barrel to create extra drag. You wouldn't want to do a full brass breech because this thing doesn't have a large enough plunger tube to clear a full brass barrel. But just a short ring to, to keep the darts from sliding out is something that you can do. So, another one! No for K26. Yes to spring upgrades if you have the right spring, though this one is more of a pain than a regular jolt, and that saddens me. But frankly, something like this, you're going to be using it as a last-ditch effort at close range anyway. If you're using it for long-range shots, you've, you, you need to reevaluate your loadout. 
But I think it's still a really neat idea, and I want one. I think it's interesting that the, the stock goes on there upside down, which mm -hmm. means it would fit on my... Um, my hammer shot carbine. That's how they made the scavengers. They made, they put yeah. the attachment point upside down. Even this, because I wanted this for the cheek rest. So that's definitely where this. I would be really tempted to put this. Would be my my hammer shot carbine. Anyway, there you have it. That's a no. Let's recap. For those of you just tuning in or who just skipped to the end to see the results, that was a no for the scavenger itself, but yes to a spring upgrade, doubling it up with a sling fire spring. You can also use any Sling Fire Spring upgrade, which you can get from Lytake or NF Strike or any of those places. And that was sadly also very distinctly a no for the double barreled jolt. It's also a little harder to get apart because you have to take out the, the trigger pin. Um, and then the, the plunger head is riveted on rather than screwed on, so it'd be really hard to get an upgraded spring in here. But I really, I like it anyway. Anyway, there you have it. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, suggestions, go ahead and put them in the comment section below. If you have any uh, blasters that I haven't done yet that you really want to see, go ahead and put those down there, and I will try to hunt them down. And thank you guys for watching. Alright, so we're looking at the stock. Chop stock. Chop stock here, which the edge is foam, but the rest of it's hard plastic, so I really wouldn't recommend hitting a small child with it. You, I mean, you could throw it at a small dog, but um, an adult, maybe. We'll see. But the uh, the conundrum that uh, we have here is that we the the guy who owns it. What's your name again? Brandon. Brandon. I I was like, it starts with a B, but it's not Brian. I know too many people. Um, he would rather have it go this way, and I agree that the axe blade should be going down just for aesthetic reasons, so that if you're gonna melee hit somebody. melee somebody with it while holding the blaster you'd want th the hack in. So we're gonna see if you can just take these screws out and just rotate it over if the the point where it connects here is symmetrical enough to do that. So let's pop this thing open. And there we have it. Now the axe blade is on there the way it really should. Now all the screw holes are opposite of each other. But now if you were holding it like this and you were to do, a, you know, hit somebody with the back end, you'd be hitting them with the axe end, which just is very pleasing to have that action correct. Plus the stock just looks better that way and the, makes for a better cheek rest. So there you have it. Yeah, you can just pull the screws out, take out enough screws so that you can pull it apart enough to get this out, flip it over, flip this over. So you notice the screws are on the opposite side for this because the whole thing's been reversed. But this thing still fits on there correctly, so no harm, no foul. Yeah, so we, alternatively, you really probably could just take these two screws out, rotate this over, and then put this thing on here upside down. But then this one would be on here upside down, and that is uncomfortably high, which is not good. So, yeah, much better. Anyway, I like it. That's neat. Thank you, Brandon.